In early July of 1968, I was as far away as I had ever been from Brooklyn. I was a kitchen boy at Camp Manitou in Central Valley, New York. My older sister, Tony, unexpectedly drove up in her souped up Barracuda. That used car with its signature long curved back window rode like a rocket ship. She got me aside in my cabin and presented me with an official correspondence from the Selective Service. I opened this ominous missive and first saw the subway token scotched on top of the letter. The message started with greetings. I was drafted by my fellow citizens. I was also being thrown out of the Garden of Eden for Camp Manitou was an all-girls camp and a kitchen girl and many female counselors about my age. On July 16th, I felt like I was crossing the River Styx when I reported to Fort Hamilton back in Brooklyn. That night, I took my first plane ride to Fort Jackson in South Carolina. That was as far away as I had ever been before. After basic and advanced training down south, again, I was as far away from Brooklyn as I had ever been before. I was flown to Vietnam. On May 11, 1970, I returned home, more or less okay, but there were no greetings from my fellow citizens. In November of 1971, I went to a veteran job fair at the Armory at Lexington Avenue and 26th Street a new corporation headed by Howard Samuels, who had run for governor, hosted a booth. This public benefit corporation was called New York City Off-Track Betting, OTB for short. On November 29, 1971, I started as a part-time cashier earning $3.28 an hour at the OTB on Kings Highway and 16th Street. I went to Brooklyn College after work. In the 70s, a wonderful higher education was offered tuition-free. In my 33-year career with OTB, armed with an accounting degree, I was able to steadily advance. One of my first positions was that of a branch auditor. In its heyday, OTB had about 170 branch offices in prime New York City locations. I would perform cash audits and surprise visits three offices to reconcile the considerable cash on hand to the cash stated by documents. Every other week, the branch auditors would gather at 1501 Broadway headquarters to get paid, have meetings, and submit our own expense reports to include mileage and other travel costs. The oldest statesman of the branch auditors was John Benfatti. He dressed like a college professor should. One Friday, the director who approved the expense reports came into this audit room. I nicknamed him the checker of the checkers. John, I see that you put down last week, you walked to all three of the different branches on Avenue U. They are miles apart, he asked, puzzled. Oh, it was a beautiful day. I wanted to walk, and I completed my work, John smiled. After the director left the room, still shaking his head, a new member of the staff turned to John. You could have listed mileage and parking meter use. Nobody would have known the difference. People can sometimes speak volumes without saying a word. John simply got up, straightened himself, and silently wagged a finger, which meant that honest Jen, John Benfatti doesn't do things that way. John had a very dry wit. One day he told me about his being an orphan in New Orleans. He topped anything I ever heard about growing up poor. One kid would buy a penny piece of candy and suck on it for a while and then give it to me to finish. Oh, that was a gift. As a short story writer, I used that image in my President of the United States work. I also embellished a little and had my President elect recording, recalling that as a child, he was the last to finish that penny piece of candy after his two older brothers had a turn at it. As the new millennium started, the changing gambling habits 
along with the proliferation of casinos, state lotteries, and scratch-off tickets, has sent OTB to the fate of the dodo bird. It was a good run, though, with, heart, with fond heart memories of people like Howard Samuels, John Ben Fatty, and a pleasant guy named Philip Jambry, and many other good folks that I had the pleasure to work with. Thank you.